I'm an adopted myself, so um, I think it's absolutely a matter for both of them. And we should discuss about it if uh, either party wants to see each other. I think they should know. I think they have every right to know who their parents were and you know, for, for whatever reason that they couldn't be their parents, I think there has to be an explanation so that kid can get on with his life. Welcome back. We're talking about changing the laws around adoption records, the rights of adoptees to know their birth parents and the rights of parents to privacy. Do you think adoption records should be opened? Please give us a call. The number is 902-481-4441. And with me is Ron Murdoch, an adoptee and a uh, gentleman who's had a lot of experience with this whole issue. Um, right now we have another caller on the, on the line. Her name is Pat. She's Oh, we don't. She, we're we're waiting. We're we're waiting for a caller. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you about, Ron, was um, as you said before, um, there's limited access to information in Nova Scotia, and I believe it's the same in PEI and New Brunswick. For a fee, you can get non-identifying information um, through the Department of Community Services, and Community Services Department says that protects the expectation of privacy that um, that the birth parents had when they gave the child up for adoption. Now, what's your feeling on that? That's sort of their side of things. Yes, and it's quite understandable. I mean, it is a delicate balance. Mm -hmm. It is a delicate situation. The last thing that should ever happen is for somebody to knock on somebody's door and say, hey, I think you're my mother. And that was, is exactly what does happen. Oh, because sure. people get desperate, find out in their own way the, the route through. And don't know how to approach it? And don't know how to approach it. The mother doesn't know how to respond, and you get a horrendous situation. And a whole lot of people with a new identity. Well, or a denial. Or a denial. A Complete denial, denial, which, which is very extremely painful. painful. I would like to see, you know, there's a lot of talk about the right to privacy. They have to balance the, in the law the right to privacy with the right to know. I'd like to rephrase that. I'd like to see the right to know contact balanced with the right to know. The parent has absolutely every right to say, I cannot and I will not see this person, but here's the information. Interesting. Now, I think I would be most willing to pay a fee which went to the social worker who helped the birth parent and the adopted person deal with their situation in that case. There's a That's creative $250 alternative. Because then my right of knowing is not interfered with. That's a creative alternative. I'm putting that to Minister Cosman in my meeting with her tomorrow Great as idea. a possibility of a way forward. Great idea. I, I'm anxious to see if we can't open a dialogue and get the thing moving. It's been stagnated, as far as I can see, for a long time. I know there's a ministerial uh, advisory uh, committee meeting and about to, to uh, submit their report. On the other hand, there is already a very good report from 1994 with 14 recommendations, with 14 recommendations, which none is ignored. Of which were, have been accepted. And I don't understand. Nobody seems to have been given a reason as to why that's not been taken Maybe on. Maybe you can get some answers on that tomorrow. I'm hoping. Maybe you I'm can. Hoping. I but think we do have another caller on the line right now. Am I correct? We have Pat from Chesapeake waiting. Hello. Hi, Pat. Are you Hi. there? Yes, I am. Please go ahead with your question or comment. Uh, I am a birth mother searching for a daughter. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Ron for uh, bringing this to the forefront, we need more people of uh, importance of his nature, stature to be on our side. Um, I have just finished paying the government $250 to have a search done for my daughter because I have hmm. tried every avenue I can think of. Um, their logistics or reasons for not opening the record, one of them is to protect the birth mother, and I was never promised confidentiality. I have no need for the government to protect me from my child. And if she showed up at my door, I would welcome her with open arms. I have always said that. It wasn't until two years ago I decided to do this search because I went by the line they fed me that uh, you go out and get on with your life because you have mm -hmm. no rights to this child yeah. once you sign these papers. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I never felt I had the right to search for her. And well, I think thanks a lot to parent finders, you know, I, I have learned that I do have this right. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, before I die, there was nothing that would make me happier than to be able to hold her for the first time. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of adopted people feel the same way, that they just have no right to even begin. They have no right to ask. They have no right to uh, demand the that, information. That, that is so wrong. They have every right they in the world. Right. They do. Absolutely. But right. it takes... I think it takes a little bit of work on the part of the adopt if they do feel that way, 
it takes a little bit of work on the part of the adopted person to overcome that, and there are people who can help you overcome that feeling of oh, not being worthy, not being, just accepting the crumbs and never a piece of the cake well, or never the cake. The, the, adopt, the, the birth parent feels the same way. Like, I, I have suffered from depression for 36 years mm. and have only realized that this is probably where it all stemmed from in the first place, yeah. that, you know, I, I didn't feel, I had no self-esteem. Yeah. I didn't feel worthy to even be a person. Right. Well, that's, that, I think, echoes, too, the, the um, feelings of a lot of adopted people. It, 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 this doesn't apply to you, but uh, as a matter of interest, I, I'm living in Amsterdam now for the last four years, and in Holland, it's a moral and legal responsibility on the part of the parent to look after a child they have, and that includes children who've been given up for adoption, the parents have a legal obligation right? to provide information about the child's background. So there are other ways to do this, other oh, ways that work. The rest of the world is, is way ahead. Really, oh, the rest definitely. of the world is way ahead. Uh, yeah, it's open in England, it's open in Scotland, it's open in Scandinavia, in Holland. It, very interesting, in Holland, a few years ago, and what started the whole thing, uh, a woman took the government to court. And she won. And she did win. Oh, yes, she won. And so maybe uh, somebody out there... And the records were opened up. Yes. Maybe Marvel. somebody out here in Nova Scotia has got the wherewithal to take the Nova Scotia government <laughs> to court and win. I don't know. know. We may not need to. Let's see what Minister Cosman yeah, has to say to us tomorrow. Yeah, you an alternative uh, yeah. before, before you go that route. <laughs> um, I just wanted to bring up something that we were talking about a little bit before the show that I thought was, was very interesting and very beautiful. You were talking about the importance of touch.